Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. A very good morning to all the viewers. I am Hiral Dadia. Clearly, if you go to see from a market's perspective, uh, we are pretty much seeing a flattish move in trade today, but we've maintained levels above 19,550. Uh, overall, if you go to see in terms of the breadth as well, it's absolutely 50-50. Uh, you have the pharma names which are seeing a good run, so there is some action that has come back from a DB's laboratories to a Sun Pharma to a Cipla. Uh, you have life insurance companies also, which are seeing a good run, HDFC Life as well as an SBI Life. The metal counters continue to see profit booking for a second consecutive session. However, a lot of stock-specific action that we've been witnessing as well. Joining us on the show is Dharmesh Kant, Head in Equity uh, Derivative Research at Chola Securities. Dharmesh, uh, good morning and welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning. Dharmesh, overall, let's pick up a couple of segments first. Railway stocks have been up and about over the last couple of trading sessions. I would say not even last couple, but uh, a couple of months now. The traction has constantly been building and the kind of order book that they hold is absolutely strong. Uh, today, we are seeing some bit of profit booking that's come in in terms of railway names. But what's your overall view? See, the sector continues to wear a very sweet spot. And after a long, long time, this has happened with the sector. I mean... The last 10 years has been horrible, but uh, one and a half year, the traction started picking up and six months has been uh, phenomenal for the railway segment per se. And the reasons are very, I mean, it's obvious. Uh, first, the Make in India concept and the thrust of the government to push more on the indigenous production has worked well for the railway segment. The government spending has gone up significantly. Usually, the if you look at the budgetary allocation, it's around 5 lakh crores of annual uh, allocation to the transportation sector. Sector and recently, a month I mean, three four days back, there has been a proposal being moved in the cabinet of 5.25 lakh crore of additional expenditure on the railway itself over the next five to six years. And this would be pertaining to the overall of the entire segment be it coaches, railway tax, signaling system, safety, the internet of IoT things in the railway. Uh, uh, coaches, but the Wi-Fi connection and everything. So all sorts of companies who cater to the railway segment is going to benefit from this additional expenditure, which is about 20 percent. And domestic railway company, I mean the companies who support the railway system, be it you know wagon manufacturing or the laying on tracks or even the signaling system and the technology uh, built up there, the braking system of the coaches, they have been getting very strong order book traction. The CAGR has been likely to be around 25 to 30 percent order book CAGR. The best part is the execution has improved significantly and the operating margins are improving because now the cash flow is coming from the government. So no more working capital headwind out there. It has in fact become a tailwind for these companies and operational efficiency with all the foreign tie-ups is happening with them. So I think this evaluation-wise, if you look at one year or two year kind of a uh, projection, it looks very stretched and expensive, but uh, considering the ROE is around 25 to 30 percent is an average ROE for any company getting to the railway segment, for a case in one week RVNL. So, uh, such companies will continue to attract buying traction. Here and there, trading profiting, profit taking will be there, but if you are looking at three to five year perspective, I think it's still a double form here. All the railway stocks, the basket, all put together. Right. So that's with regards to where railway counters go. Moving on, you have the sugar pack, which has been in focus as well. Uh, up move coming in there on the way uh, the sugar prices are moving in the, uh, you know, domestic as well as international markets. Secondly, uh, the way the rainfall has panned out, that is expected to impact yields. And there's a murmur going on with regards to where SAP prices could be increased in UP as well ahead of the elections. Uh, how, how would you actually expect uh, you know, investors to deal with the sugar pack and what would your top bets be? See, sugar as a theme was never the investor's bet. It was more of a cyclical trading play. And uh, whenever the chips are down, that is the time to devil into such stock for a meaningful gains. I mean, 25-30% kind of a stock price movement is easily gettable in sugar companies. And see, I mean, the data points which you pointed out are all valid data points and they are contradictory in nature. What has happened is international sugar prices have shot up quite uh, far uh, when compared to the domestic sugar prices because they have been in control and the fear that government may intervene if they increase the domestic sugar prices significantly. So that fear is keeping them from increasing the prices uh, that rapidly. Yeah, right, rainfall has been deficient and the recovery rate for sugar yields will come down from sugar cane. Around 13, 14%, 13.5% is the average, which is likely to come down to 12.5%. So 1% is kind of a 
it is likely to be there. But uh, India is sitting on a very huge inventory surplus of around 6 million ton. So that is good enough to take care of uh, any domestic sugar demand. So inflation can be ruled out by government intervention in out there. And again, we are heading into election season. So SAP uh, is always a uh, very, you know, a candy which is offered by the government to farmers and likely scenario is because rainfall is deficient and farmers uh, income will go down right? at the same time inflationary pressure will uh, make their uh, actual income much lower than uh, the realization in the hand so that may have an impact on this so uh, in a tight spot i think more of a trading play one can still dabble into it because they have predicted from top and bouncing back but these are bounce backs i think if you are looking at a meaningful traction and the ethanol play which was there for a long time seems to be subsiding with this ev thing catching up very very fast so uh, i mean just play for trading perspective uh, and from here on also if one is playing out or just a trade that uh, uh, 10 50 percent paisa can still be there in the sugar per kg basket. So you can play that 10 15 percent if you get on stock price, book your profit, and be happy about it. Right, so that's with regards to where sugar names go. Uh, moving on, you have OMCs and paint companies that are in focus now, taking into consideration the way crude has been moving. We already touched on $91 or a little over $91 in intraday trade. Uh, how? What would you advise investors to do with OMCs as well as paint companies? So OMCs first. Uh, what has happened with the OMCs is like post the Ukraine war, when the crude oil started shooting up from around um, Brent was around 80, 82 to 123, 124. So we did an analysis of the entire scenario, and what we figured out because diesel and petrol prices after the consistent hikes has been stabilized at 104, 106. I mean, I'm talking about the petrol prices which is prevailing in the Mumbai city. And they, it has not come down. I mean, in the food prices did, uh, you know, fall dramatically after making a high of around $128 per barrel. But uh, uh, the letdown in the prices has not been there. So it was from uh, March till August uh, 31st last year. Uh, the food prices were shooting up and we have taken $90 per barrel as a benchmark. And post that, it has been consistently falling down. So around $10 billion kind of a net impact was there. All the refiners put together, uh, which they have to share out from their pockets. And post that, around $15 billion kind of a profit they have made over what they have expended earlier. So $5 billion kind of a surplus money these all refiners are sitting on. Government is aware of that. It was evident in the quarterly numbers. Last year, numbers were uh, absolutely stunning for all these refiner companies, uh, case in point being BPCL. And uh, I mean, these coffers will be utilized when the you know prices go up. But the problem is, again, we are heading into an election year, and recently we have heard that NPG buys cut of around 200 rupees per cylinder subsidy being given by the government. Such other measures can also come into play. So this will restrict this sweet, I mean, gains which this refiners are sitting on. Anywhere where government intervention is there, it's very difficult to uh, predict the price uh, based on the valuation multiple because you are not very sure about the uh, Pact which is likely going to come and we stay with this company. So, again, a trading play, one can play these trading bets, uh, but uh, largely stay out from them from investment perspective till, I mean, more clarity emerges as to the pricing. The government has tried, but it's still it's not a market neutral pricing. Coming back to pain companies, I mean, again, festive season is starting up. And these, this is the time where they make the most of the business, Q2 and Q3. Later half of Q2, Q3, Q4 are the best quarter for these companies. And they are sitting on a lot of inventory. So, I mean, Q2 won't be affected by any hike in crude prices. And it has just come up. $91 bent, which we are talking about, is just a one-day affair as of now. If it sustains above that, the margins can come under pressure. And we have seen this margin volatility earlier in this bank of this. But I think uh, the way the real estate sector is picking up, the way the, way the home, source, uh, home sales, sales are happening with existing on new home sales, uh, they will see a volume traction of 12 to 15 percent. So the management interactions which we had with paint companies, they are very gung-ho about the volume traction. And they were like, at that time it was 80, 82 dollars a barrel for a while. So that time they were very confident of maintaining the margins. But even if, I mean, 100 basis point, 150 basis point kind of hit is there on the margin, but seeing the volume traction in the price ability which these companies have, 
uh, I think there uh, is does a merit or trading bet on these companies. I mean, Asian paint and major paint can be acclimated at current levels because the stock prices have corrected and uh, now forming uh, maybe four or five percent more correction if it is there. It's a good buy on dip kind of an opportunity for 20 35 percent kind of an upside gains for next three or four months. I mean, I'm talking about till the money period. So, paints are a buy. Refiners, one can, you know, just play or trade or avoid. Right. So that's with regards to a few of the sectoral picks that we have been talking about. Moving on, a geo financial services now will be out uh, from NSE indices as well. Uh, how are you looking at a GFS? What would you advise investors to do? I think the geo financial services, I mean, if you are looking at a real long term play from, say, a four years, five year kind of a holding period, uh, just uh, uh, giving the credence and the uh, I mean the benefit to the promoters. Uh, I think one should be holding them, uh, though the competition is very stiff in this uh, segment. Uh, but uh, seeing how Reliance has demonstrated their capability and strength in carrying out new businesses, be it retail or be it telecom, and the way they capture the market, the so same effort would be there in uh, going into the NBFC space, and maybe later on they may also go for a banking license. Uh, that should be the ultimate uh, goal for. Uh, uh, this is your financial services, uh, but uh, uh, financial sector uh, per se is well entrenched with very deep pocket plays. So competition will definitely uh, tighten up. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, from pure to investment perspective, and it's a management call. I'm taking a call on the management rather than the business itself. So 15, 16% kind of a trade growth is there and uh, they may go a bit higher, 17, 18% kind of a Kaggle can be there on the EU size. Uh, but uh, too early to call, let's see a couple of quarters before this, uh, the entire aggression and the way the penetration into the market is there where this company can be demonstrated and more uh, news flow and the parameters surrounding the financial space uh, is out in the public domain. But yes, the advice what we have recommended our clients here is if you have a long term horizon, please keep on holding that. And the bet is on the promoter group company rather than the business itself. Okay, so that's with regards to geo financial services. Sipla has been in the news as well on the back of a stake sale coming in there. A lot, I mean, and if this deal happens, this would be one of the largest deals in the history of the pharma sector. How are you looking at a Sipla? See, Sipla, if you look at from business perspective, uh, the company has been in and out of uh, sweet spots. Sometimes they have been able to pull on the businesses, but uh, there were times because the business model not performing well, and it has a lot to do with the uh, internal uh, uh, problems of the top management out there in Sipla, I mean, the promoter family. Uh, but uh, this quarter has been very good. The last quarter gone by Q1, they did very well. And their uh, African business has been picking up quite smartly. Uh, America is only 22% of the business, so not uh, much problems out there. And domestic, they control the 46% kind of a revenue comes from the domestic business. So that segment is holding out. Uh, but uh, problem with all these pharmaceutical companies is one is the prices are sort of very, very high compared to the evaluation matrices which are there it's not like two years three years back when the, you know it was a justification that was there for the valuation so a company of say which is earning 50 16 percent kind of an roe and a growth kind of say 12 to 13 percent of the revenue impact and you are getting it at around 30 32 kind of a ttm so just from investment perspective doesn't merit as far as this i mean the stake sale and the sale of the business is concerned let's see how it happens the names which are there uh, it was, I mean, bewildering to see a company taking over and the company three exercise. It become uh, how it will make sense for the company which is buying was a bit. It, it is a bit of a big challenge. So, uh, I mean, just this speculative trade, if it is played out, one can stay. One can play it out. But from pure pure business valuation perspective, I think it's now on the higher end of the valuation matrices. So one should be taking the profit out there. Right. Moving on away, apart from a supply of a Sanghi Industries, uh, which is in focus as well, in fact, uh, post the acquisition, a lot's brewing on that front. How are you looking at a Sanghi Industries? 
the cement, if you have, if you have to play the bed on the cement space, uh, please, please avoid all small and mid cap mm -hmm. companies. So, because every company is now getting their capacity being doubled. So, uh, three, four billion ton being added to a small uh, company doesn't make, I mean, uh, doesn't make much of a sense. So, place like Ultratech Cement, ACC, Ambuja, they are all would be doubling their capacity. If not doubling, at least 60% of the capacity addition will be there in the next two to three years. And I mean, all this uh, plant commissioning is happening before time. They are moving ahead of the time schedules which they have given for commissioning of the plant. So, it's more of a volume game now, Cement, and more of a market share game. The type of uh, influence spending which we have seen and which is likely to be seen going forward in the next six years. I think all this capacity is the thought that it won't be, it will be a surplus. I don't think so. Uh, these capacities will be utilized uh, uh, by the, I mean, the infra spending which is done either by the government of India or the private sector space or the real estate space. So, uh, play on the large caps. We have seen this month, they have taken price hikes of around 10 to 30 rupees per bag, depending upon the uh, geographies where this uh, can be absorbed. And uh, uh, more or less, I mean, topic, if you ask me, I will still go with Ultratech, KCC, and Amuja uh, rather than uh, any stock which is lower down the order in the capacities. I mean, for one outlier can be a Dambia Bharat from the Eastern region. Again, they are in backing on a very aggressive capacity expansion. So these three, four companies should uh, be your, I mean, choice for investment for the cement uh, companies. Valuations, they always have treated at expensive valuations. They will trade so. And EBITDA margin improvement going forward is likely to be the same in Q3 and uh, Q4 of this financial year. So uh, plenty of scope from here to go on. I mean, the best pick should be ACC followed by Antarctic Cement. Right. So those are picks, uh, you know, that we are looking out for as well. Uh, thank you, Dharmesh, so much for joining us on the show. As always, a pleasure to speak to you and get views from you. Uh, so overall... Uh, clearly, if you see from a market's perspective, a pretty flattish move is what we are seeing, uh, though individual stock-specific action continues uh, to be on our radar. That's all that we have in this session. Thanks for watching and lots more lined up on the other side. Please stay tuned to BQ Prime.